Ah, the vast, beautiful seas of Degen, patrolled by the Marshal Service finest ships 24-7. And for good reason as well, the seas of Degen are infested with pirates, scavengers, and worst of all, rebels. It can be especially dangerous here just in the gulf of the Noquan Desert. Luckily though, not only are the seas patrolled by the Marshal Service finest ships, but these ships are also operated by the finest crews of sailors that the military has to offer. Yes indeed one could say the cream of the crop, for it takes quite a bit to keep a ship like this operational. But of course every good captain knows that ships not only have to be operating, but they also have to be operating efficiently. For at any moment there could be an enemy vessel on the horizon, or some other nefarious plot to take down the Marshal Service. Luckily though, our boys in black, or in this case boys in blue, <laughs> because they're sailors, are ready at a moment's notice. For example, of course, as our sailor Nona here is eating her lunch for the day, there are two more sailors taking her place on guard duty. And they will continue to take her place on guard duty as she takes an inventory of the weapons and armor. Because ensuring that the ship has a well-stocked armor is just as important as ensuring that our main guns are ready to fire at a moment's notice, or making sure that our anti-aircraft weapons are also ready at a moment's notice to protect the ship. Ah yes, true efficiency. It is an all-day task, and a sailor's job is never done. However, However, of course, with that being said, a good sailor is a well-rested sailor. And even our sturdy, efficient, distinguished Marshal Service sailors need to sleep at some point. Ah, uh, yes, that's right, Nona. Go ahead and get yourself some rest. You have truly earned it today. Oh god, the hull. It's been breached. We're, we're being boarded. Alright, Nona, just breathe. You've been trained for this. You need to make your way to the armory. We already know that it's well stocked. You and the other sailors need to equip armor and weapons to survive. After putting on our body armor and equipping any weapons that we can find, we need to make our way to the deck. We're going to need to make sure that our main guns as well as any auxiliary weapons are not damaged so we can defend ourselves. They appear to be fine from here, but we're going to need to- Thankfully, Nona made it out of the explosion alive, but the same couldn't be said for her comrades. Thankfully, though, many of her fellow sailors seem to have survived the onslaught thus far. Look, I'm not going to lie to you, things are looking pretty grim for the crew. But there very well may still be a chance, a very dim light at the end of the tunnel. It is still very possible that, at the very least, Nona here can get out of this alive. All we gotta do is make it- Alright, maybe there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe the only thing at the end of the tunnel is the Rebellion. Who coincidentally, it appears, have boarded this vessel and began taking us prisoner. Well, it would appear that Oakley and her elite rebel companions have taken this ship hostage and any surviving crew members along with it. Most notably of which, of course, is the ship's captain. That poor bastard. God only knows what they plan on doing with him. If he's lucky, maybe they'll execute him after taking him wherever they're going. I suppose anything's better than staying on this sinking ship, though. Oakley and her rebel soldiers landed at the nearby Oak Foundation base in the Noquan Desert. 
and they were of course quickly greeted by none other than Lurkot himself along with his men. Oakley handed the captain over to Lurkot's men for safekeeping while the two talked. She explained that based on her mother's orders, Lurkot and the Oak Foundation are supposed to keep the captain here until further notice. Lurkot then asked what he should do with the other prisoners that were taken from the ship as well. Oakley stated that those prisoners were his to do with as he saw fit. Just before re-equipping her helmet and getting back into her helicopter with her soldiers. However, of course, before the helicopter would leave, Lurkot already had a bright idea as to what to do with these martial prisoners. As has become something of a tradition here in the Noquan Desert, those who are captured are sold into slavery to any of the slavers wandering around this beautiful wasteland. And of course, these two low-ranking sailors would be no different. Off they go with Big Daddy and his crew to, well, quite frankly, wherever Big Daddy pleases. So is the way of the desert.